Now, you know if you've watched this channel for any amount of time on our Good Morning Walks or whenever we do a live stream, very, very often I bring up the fact of we need to reform our voting system absolutely desperately. Desperately. And most of the times it does come under, um, of course, changing the voting system for the House of Commons. And I... I, I 100% agree with all the arguments there. I think, again, the the way that you look at Cornwall, Cornwall is always the classic example. Um, you take all the Cornwall constituencies and they the Tories get about, um, what, 48% of the votes, but the Lib Dems and Labour get, like, the other, the other big pieces of the pie. They get, like, you know... Um, you know, like 30 and 29%, I think, respectively, or, or something like that. But they get a fair sizable chunk. But when you look at, obviously, the, the, the current system, how it's represented on the first past the post, pretty much <coughs> every uh, Cornish um, constituency is represented by a, by a Conservative MP. But again, you look at the, how that vote share is across all of Cornwall, and it doesn't really seem fair that they get that amount of representation. But again, that is down to first past the post. That's how first past the post works. Now, of course, in a PR system, again, the Conservatives would probably still get a a, a you know a good share of, of MPs down in Cornwall, but there would also be a fair representative share of Labour and Lib Dem MPs down there as well. So that's what we talk about, about making it, it sort of fair and being it more uh, a proportion. I'm, I'm a big advocate, as you as me, may or might not, of a single transferable vote. But, but the other, the other place in play would always absolutely be the House of Lords. It is a massive problem. There are so many problems in the House of Lords. It, it, you, you really don't know where to begin. Not least, you know, you've got people like Ledbetter who are in. Or if Boris Johnson wants, he could just add an extra, like, 30 lords if he wanted to in the House of Lords. Uh, again, it, it's, it's, it's an absolute undemocratic nightmare that desperately, desperately needs solving. And... We're going to go over the, the Byline Times article on this, of, again, called Solving the House of Lords Problem. Uh, it gets right to the heart of it and brings up so many problems that are in the House of Lords. And I think we've said this before, how a House of Lords scandal has not broke is unbelievable. But as I always say to the, to the people who do want PR, look, I know you want it for the House of Commons, but when you look like cross-party, the House of Lords unanimously has such a high demand to be reformed. Trying to change that could be such an easy win. And as I've said before, if you change the House of Lords to like a proportional representation system of, of like single transferable vote, that could usher in a massive, massive sea change for democracy. So even if we had the case that we have now of, let's say, you know, you've got Boris Johnson in with his massive majority, under a PR system, the House of Lords would be able to effectively fight back against it because the Conservatives, as we've seen from all the PR reports, would never, ever be able to control a majority, not only in the Commons, but in the House of Lords as well. So let's, uh, without further ado, go diving into this article. But before we do that, please do remember to the, how, to the, the like, the share uh, buttons, of course. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help support the channel that way. So onwards to go to the Byline Times with, with this article, with the title of Solving the House of Lords Problem. So the House of Lords is the Gordian knot of British constitutional reform. A problem that almost everyone agrees needs to be fixed, though nobody can actually figure out how. Both Tony Blair and Nick Clegg had a go at it, with very mixed success. And of course, the question remains, is it too difficult to solve? As of March 2022, there are at least 766 members of the House of Lords, while 92 of those members are, quote, ex uh, expected head, 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 head expected hereditary members 
And of course, Labour's 1997 manifesto promised the right of her hereditary peers to sit and vote in the House of Lords will be ended. Yet they still exist, 23 years after Lords reform. When the 1990, uh, 1999 reforms took place, <coughs> threats by Conservative peers to hold up all the legislation due to their opposition to the proposed uh, led to the, the deal between the Vice Count Carbon and the Conservative leader in the House of, House of Lords and the then Prime Minister Tony Blair of Labour to agree to keep those 92 hereditary peers, most of them Conservatives. Blair was completely hoodwinked by Carbon, who persuaded him that... <coughs> Unless he made concessions, he'd never get it through the Lords. The Liberal Democrat leader of the Lords, Nick uh, uh, Dick Newbury, told the Byline Times. When, her, when, a her, when a hereditary peer dies, there is a by-election to replace them. This process has become, at times, embarrassingly undemocratic, with just a handful of electors voting from their colleagues to try and fill the vacant place. This position was supposed to be a temporary one, but... When options were laid before the House of Commons for a fully reformed upper house back in 2002, MPs could not make up their minds on the final makeup of the chamber. Then, of course, the Iraq war began and reforms were stalled and eventually forgotten. It just got to be too difficult category, Lord Newbury continued. And of course, fast forward to the coalition government years of 2010 to 2015 and the Lib Dems and made Lords that were their main targets of electoral reform. Of course, in the end, they got neither, and they lost 80% of their MPs to boot. The party's uh, leader, even during this period, Nick Clegg, proposed Lords reform that would have seen peers elected on a regional basis, sitting in for a single term of about 12 years with elections every six. And again, the bill failed when Labour and the backbench Conservative MPs voted against it. While many agree that the House of Lords is an imperfect system, Nobody can actually agree on what a better system would actually look like. We've said this before, what that better system actually does look like just a moment ago. There is, of course, an expectation that peers are, quote, the great and the good, often independently wealthy, and that should make and they shouldn't take a salary only while claiming moderate expenses. The Byline Times obviously recently examined the peers who rarely even attend, including Lord Elfgill Ledbetty. Again, who attended the Lords on one day beginning and then becoming a, a peer back into September of 2020 and again of August 2021. As well as the remaining hereditary Lords, there are also at least 24 Church of England bishops who sit in the upper house, making the UK one of two countries with legislative offices reserved for clerics. The other, of course, is Iran. Removing the hereditary peers would mean to get rid of all the unprofessional work shy Lords and while there are, again, very few of them, they have not totally gone away. Many peers like the ambience of the Palace of Westminster, and while it's not known for fine dining, taking guests into the restaurant is a way for some peers to show off their status. There are, of course, currently five private member bills seeking to reform parts of the House of Lords, introduced by the members of both the Commons and Labour parties. None of them has had much chance of becoming law without government support. On five occasions, I've introduced private members' bills to try and end the by-election for hereditary peers, said Lord Bruce Gridnot, the former Labour chief whip in the Lords. There are always by-elections pending, and that's one pending, and there's one pending at this very moment. Lord Gridnot not only possessed a uh, 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 proposed the very limited reform of removing the last hereditary peers when they die, because all attempts at having to all singing, all dancing reforms to the House of Lords have failed, the ones that have succeeded have focused on a specific issue. To try and get a majority when it's covering everything from a method of elections to the frequency of elections of the ele electability of the candidates. And unfortunately, it's like trying to write a constitution, he told the Byline Times. The capacity to foul up, and com uh, foul up a complete parliamentary system, if not two, is completely overwhelming. Lord Gunnett's comments also revealing the constitution is important. The UK has no written constitution, but institutions such as the monarchy and again the House of Lords are part of an unwritten constitution glued together by hereditary privilege, connection, patronage and money. Trying to change this unwritten system and you will very quickly be met with opposition from those who benefit it. I know how difficult it is to get a private member's bill through, Lord Gallant said. I've got about 10 or 15 resolute op opponents in the House of Lords, 
And the thing that, that makes it easy for them is that the longer you, longer you make the bill, the easier it is to sink it. One of Lord Greynock's opponents is Malcolm Sinclair, the Earl of Carthus. For this part, the Earl says that there is no opposition. He's not opposed to reform. In fact, I want more than Grody wants, he says. I don't totally want the appointed chamber in the hands of the prime minister. The problem is that everyone wants reform, but there is very little common good. And I feel the time has come when we have uh, when we, that we have an elected house. And I don't like the appointment system. So again, that's so bizarre where you've got one Lord saying, I want to do these reforms, but this other guy who was like my opponent completely stopping me. And then when you ask him, he goes, oh, I want it reformed. But I want to go even further than the guy whose reforms I'm trying to stop. <laughs> Again, it's, it's, it's absolutely, this is how insane the House of Lords really gets. But people just don't understand it because it gets almost no attention. Another MP who is, again, has a private member's bill seeking to reform the Lords is the Conservative MP Paul Minard. He said, there are so many uh, desperate views as to which should occur next and indeed what the end point should be. No, no, I'll tell the byline times. Maintaining that he wants to stop by-election and replace hereditary peers at the very least. He said that many more uh, thoughtful colleagues do agree with me on Lord's reform. And for Marard, reform of the upper chamber is not on the top of anyone's agenda. And maybe it shouldn't be. But one analysis is that ever since the early Blair years, we've tinkered with the constitutional balance in this country without ever taking a step back and looking at the overall picture he added. Maynard's bill argues that for some directly elected, uh, that for some form of directly elected Senate, in which the members have an inferior mandate compared to the Commons elected upper as an alternative vote system. Again, unfortunately, there's very little appetite for it especially in the Conservative Party, for these sort of changes. But for Monod has tried to make the point to his colleagues that future governments of differing persuasions might to try to legislate the far-reaching constitutional reform, and we might want to consider whether we should preempt that. Politics is, uh, is partly about planning for the long term, as well as dealing with today's hard headlines, he added. <laughs> Again, um... Haven't seen a lot of that from the Conservative Party, but um, nice to know at least some members of the Conservative Party do see that. And as I said at the beginning, there is a lot of support for cross-party serious reform of the Lords. You could make this an election issue. You could make it an election issue and put it top of the agenda to try and solve. Because I've said before, I think we need an upper, ha an upper elected house. I think we do. I think it should be elected by a proportional representation based on a single transferable vote. I think if you could do that, it would be a massive, massive sea change in British uh, electoral politics. Um, so it appears that there is, uh, there is more appetite for Lords reforms among the Conservatives at the moment, given that they are having trouble winning some of their votes in the Lords. And again, according to the Conservative hereditary peer, Lord Charles Cawthorn, there does not appear that there does not need to be Lord's reform because one of the problems trying uh, re re relating back to voting is that the government finds it almost impossible to win votes. There is a big di uh, discrepancy between the number of Lib Dem MPs, uh, MPs and, of course, peers. At the moment, however, it does appear that Labour is also uh, kicked uh, Lord's reform into the long grass, with Keir Starmer having abandoned his pledge when made elected leader to try and pursue it. The, but the issue will not go away. It promises to keep lurking in the background, very much like our unelected peers, moving through the corridors of Britain's upper chamber of power. And again, I completely, absolutely agree um, with, with the article. There, there needs to be some very serious uh, attempts at Lord's reform. And I think, it again, it doesn't start in the House of Lords, um, of course, getting rid of the hereditary elected peers would almost certainly be a, a good step forward. But let's let's get these guys elected. Let's just shoo them out completely. Now, of course, there is obviously a problem uh, that we could potentially see of maybe in the future, let's say we get to this stage and we're trying to pass 
this uh, this bill and it passes through the commons but it won't pass through the lords because the lords refuse to pass it because it gets rid of them now i've said time and time again if that comes to that state then the, we need to just bypass the lords and just boot them all out um but it's it's hard to tell if that would ever actually happen whether the lords shall we say will go shall we say quietly into the night um but needs to say, I do believe we need a proper upper elected house. And I think it needs to be based on proportional representation based on a single transferable vote. I think if you do that, we could potentially see a massive sea change in electoral politics because you would then have the commons elected by first past the post. That all, you know, the shenanigans happens about that. Then you would have an upper house which could fight back against a lot of, uh, shall we say, the current insanity that the conservatives want to push through that we've seen uh, especially push them through in the past year or so um it needs to happen sooner or later and the quicker we do it the better and it's also very telling as we've said before that even the conservatives are very well aware that this needs to be done sooner or later and they themselves have been saying well, should we try and cut this off the pass? Because it may be that what gets through, we don't like it. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and, of course, comment down below for your thoughts as well. <laughs> um, if you do happen to be a lord, let me know. <laughs> but, of course, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. And, of course, there are my links down below to my Patreon page and the World Foundation link called Buy Me Coffee, where those people do like to support the channel that way. As always, thank you very much to everyone who does support the channel, uh, even if you do just press the like and share buttons. As always, we'll see you all next time.